up my good people this is now saturday night um future britney here actually from what you're about to see after this because i'm still getting the hang of this and i realized that what um what you'll see after this was actually was from tuesday and i was like wait a minute i didn't really do an intro i kind of just went into the video I, I'm still figuring this out, so we'll get there. But um, speaking of getting there, I also realized that I actually never introduced myself. Um, hi, I'm Brittany. I love long walks in the park and cozy winter nights. Just kidding. I actually hate winter and I don't really care for long walks in the park. I do go for walks for some cardio, but I don't really care for, for it. <laughs> but yeah, if you not watch my last vlog, which was actually my first one, um, I'll put a link up here somewhere on the screen, but we did the unboxing for my You Can Folk It uh, beginner folk art kit. We showed off a few uh, products that I like designed something and printed them on. And then I also showed you this mini uh, fabric collection. It was three different patterns with multiple colorways that I ordered from Spoonflower and I pinked them and Y'all, I don't I don't even know if y'all heard that, but there was like this um plane that sounded real low. Made me a little nervous. But anyway, um what was I saying? Fabric. Yes, yeah, so I pinked the edges of the fabric and I just kind of showed those off. I ironed them and everything. Um so take a look at that video. It was a lot of fun. But y'all, let me tell you something. I almost threw up having to press publish on that vlog like if you're one of my friends watching this you know because you probably heard it um like heard me talking about it as much as i said i wanted to throw up it just made me so sick to my stomach <laughs> having to post a vlog oh my goodness it's very different like I, I think i mentioned at the end of the last video how you know i do gaming content and it's very different from just like recording your voice or even if you're recording a game with face cam and your face is like at the bottom of the screen in a little box it's it's just very different than actually like this like just talking to people um as if like you're looking at them so it was just i'm sorry just i don't know so i definitely will say that i learned a lot just from doing that one video and um you know, I figured this is a creative vlog and doing these videos is part of my creative journey. So I kind of wanted to share some of the things that I learned from that video. Number one, I need to organize my clips, my videos. I just, I need to organize them on a daily basis or even just every other day, but I'm going to try for daily. Um, well, for two reasons. One is when I'm doing my phone, I don't have a lot of space in my phone as y'all found out last video. So I can't just have videos and photos piling up. So I need to get them off. And um, I'm currently just using Google Drive where I have it um, organized by day. So like I just go in there and dump everything in there. Uh, I use a MacBook. So um, I just download Google Drive on there. And then because I all my photos and videos are stored through iCloud, they're already on my computer. So it's very easy to just drag them off of there and onto um, my Google Drive to clear space. And I pay like $2 a month for 100 gigabytes and it's enough. Um, but yeah, so like I need to organize them because at the end of the week, trying to figure out what it is I recorded, what pictures I took and piece them together, that was tough. That was, that was very tough uh, last week and I learned too late in the game that I need to start doing that from the get go. So that's the first thing. So the second thing is I need to plan. Um, like even if things don't go as planned, I need to go into like that next vlog week, at least have an idea of what I want to do because I, this is not a lifestyle vlog. So it's not like I can just say, Oh, you know, every day is content. It's not. Um, I have life. Outside of YouTube, I work full time in a job that's pretty fulfilling. I enjoy, I enjoy my work. Um, I'm in, you know, between volunteering with church things and then other organizations that I'm in. I have other things that I do in life. So I just, I can't, I can't not go through the week not knowing what at least I want to put on that video. 
so that I could fit those things into my life. Like even if I wasn't recording, it's something that I need to do. So um, planning definitely is something that I'm going to do a better job of going forward. Number three, y'all, I need to back up. Oh my goodness. Like I apologize to anybody who was watching the last video and felt like I was throwing fabric in your face because when I'm recording, I'm looking at like the viewfinder and it seems further away. So I'm trying to show y'all stuff and I'm like, oh, they can't see it. So I'm putting it way up here. And um, I went to go edit and I was like, oof. I was like, I'm so sorry. Like, I just feel like I was all up in your personal space. So that is something that I now learned that I don't need to do all that. And um, if I need to do something closer up, cause I feel like I didn't put it close up enough. Maybe I'll just throw a screenshot in, but that's probably why I have focus issues because stuff was too close. And then the fourth and last thing is this thing right here. Um, I need to use it more. Uh, I know I, I don't care if you can see it. It's whatever. It's what I felt like doing today, but I need to use a mic. Um, I didn't realize at certain instances when I wasn't using my, so right now I'm recording on my phone, but I also use my DSLR camera. And with that, I have a mic that sits on top of it. And that picks up really well um, from far away. But depending on how the phone is, it doesn't always. So I think from now on when I use, when I'm recording using my phone, that I'm just going to use the mic so that it's a little bit clearer. Oh, and this is the DJI mic. Um, I'll post the link below in the description if you're interested. But yeah, so those were kind of like the four things that I learned from doing my very first vlog. Um, there, there were other little things like with editing and taking photos and just the whole process of setting things up. I'm um, learning how to do B-roll. That's a very, um, I'm not going to say it's a new term for me. It's not a new term. I know what it is because I have a lot of experience on the gaming side and friends that use B-roll in some of their videos. And, I, and I've done it before when I do like channel updates, I have the B-roll playing in the background while I'm talking, but that's a very different type of B-roll than real life B-roll. So um, I'm definitely learning, learning that as well, but like that is just gonna be continual. Um, but yeah, so I just felt like sharing that with you all and let me know if you have any other tips for, for me, if you, if you have seen vlogs or know some great vloggers that can get some tips from, um, I'm open to learning anything. All right, so we are getting started with um, You Can Folk It paint kit here. A few things. Um, so I watched the, it's like pre-work and then this week one lesson. So it is a 12 week program. And a few things they had you do was fill out, not fill out, a print this weekly painting planner, Monday through Sunday. I don't know if I'm gonna use this cause I'm not, quite sure what I would use it for, but um, I did print it, so I have four of them here. I decided not to do um, double-sided, but then also they had you print out this 12-week progress chart. So like we're on week one, just make a wet palette. Um, I don't think, hopefully it's in the camera, I don't think I'm gonna do that because I have this, um, but I mean, it's an option. We'll see how I feel. Find a painting space, my space, and then lessen the comma stroke Hindu Lupin. So that's what I'm going to be working on this week. I don't know what a Hindu Lupin is, <laughs> so I guess we'll find out. Um, and then here are just the webinars. I did the introduction. I have to do the plan. I don't remember. I don't know what those two things are, but we'll see. And then here are all the assignments. So I'll go ahead and put that in my binder. I've already punched them. And then they had this my why worksheet that they want you to fill out basically like why why you're doing this and then they want you to sign it so i actually did write it out um earlier i just need to put it on here so i'll do that and maybe show that off but yeah so let's get started um I did get permission to show off the book actually. So I know last week I said I wasn't sure, but I asked them on Facebook and they said, sure. They just want you to tag them so that they can kind of see what you're doing and, you know, cheer you on or whatever. So that was pretty nice of them. 
So I thought real quick, I'll just kind of show you what I didn't show before. So it kind of starts out with um, the contents. So it looks like there's 15 different things here. Um, but it looks like number one is what we're doing this week, just the strokes. And then um, we'll get into some other things. So there's a Hindu loop and florals, daisies, lace, doodle pages, C stroke heart, ribbons, common stroke doodles, linear brush doodles, lavender and daisies, roses, topiary and wreaths, peace and love, pivot stroke designs, and teddies. And then um, I'm not reading this. <laughs> it's just a welcome to the kit and it's just kind of telling you about the the folk art and then um you know how it's self-taught and how it can be simple but you know in the workbook this one to introduce you to the basic um strokes to give you a foundation and i did find out that there's an intermediate class but they're discontinuing it because they've started kind of like a master class type subscription model and i don't know it depending on how i get through this i may join that we'll see so here is just the different strokes. So there's round brush, linear brush, uh, flat brush, and then it's showing what the comma stroke is for each of those. So today I'm gonna to start with the round brush and then maybe throughout the week work on the other ones. Then there's um, the S stroke cross here. Uh, here's the C stroke. Oh, the C stroke looks like what you do to make like, um, uh, like roses. I've done that in some playing around. Pivot stroke, double loading. I don't know if y'all can see this. Uh, stifling, stippling, stifling. I don't know how you say that. And then the deer foot, foot brush. And then dots. So that's kind of cool. And then, so part of the first lesson for the comma strokes, which actually was actually to take the brush. And, like, they wanted you to take your brush, dip in water, and, like, practice doing each of these. So I actually did that already. I did that, um during lunch because I didn't want to like that's not fun to watch just watching me do this with a brush that ain't got no paint on it <laughs> so um I didn't I didn't do that um and then so I'm just gonna focus on I guess the round brush tonight because it's I'm not gonna be here all night and then um yeah so yeah we're not doing this one yet so each week whatever the homework is i'll kind of you know show you what it is but for now this is what i'm going to be working on so what i'm going to do is kind of make sure i'm prepared and everything's recording properly and then i'm going to just practice doing some comma strokes i'm going to use this color the plum i'm going to use the plum and then i have the round brush here and then this is actually um an Arteza brush, brush, book. Uh, if I, I'll try to put the name of it on the screen because I left the paper somewhere else. So I've just been kind of playing around in here with my um, markers, my acrylic markers. So that's what all of this is. And so anyway, all right, well, let's get started. It was kind of nice. Um, the first, the first, first lesson <laughs> was more so about um, like brush care and it's making sure you didn't like leave your brush in water, like pressing it down cause you kind of mess up the bristles or whatever. So that was kind of cool that she took the time to, um, you know, teach you about that and make sure you didn't screw that up. But let's go ahead and get some paint down. Quite sure that's enough. Let's see if I can do this. I'm a little nervous y'all. I'm a little nervous. All right, so let's see. So I think I'm supposed to hold the brush like this. And then it says press down. And then slowly come up. See, people are having that problem. I don't know if y'all can see it. I can't tell where the camera is going. But how it don't really come to a point. That don't look like this. Maybe I should hold on. Let me do this. Maybe I need to see it. Like, how she get that nice thick? Um, she got that nice thick, that nice thick curve. Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna keep trying. Hmm. 
I kind of like that one. Kind of like that one. I feel like my bristle I have like a little point. All right, I don't know if that was appropriate, but I kind of cut it off. <laughs> but let's see. Like, is there too much ink and too much paint on here? I don't know. Let's see. I feel like it's too much paint. All right, try another one. Press, lift, release. That ain't too bad. That is not too bad. Let's press and release. I feel like I'm not um, releasing fast enough. So like press hard then start releasing and then lift. Press hard, start releasing, then lift. I kind of like that one too. This is um, my first attempt at the round brush comma stroke, first doing the right-handed practice and then still right-handed, but then doing like the other direction and then straight. Baby, I got some work to do. Let me, I'm gonna stand up so I can see if I can get it a little closer um, so y'all can see a little bit better. Like, let me put this one down. Like, I, I kind of like these, like this one, this one, and these two I like. I really like that one and maybe, mm, no, I like this one. I don't like any of these. I can't for the life of me figure out how to get um the tip to point like this one does no no freaking idea how she does that but that's okay that's why this is practice and that's why um this week is comma stroke <laughs> because i yeah i'm gonna need a lot of practice so i'm gonna just practice my comma strokes this week i think Hold on, let me see. I think these are the daisies. Or are these daisies? Oh no, these are daisies. So these are hinder. Um, am I supposed to be doing this? I don't know. I'll find out and let y'all know if if because I need I need a lot of work. I don't even think I can move on. Let me just show y'all what the next one is. It's this right here, the Hinder Lupin Florals. Like, am I supposed to be doing this? I can't even get my strokes right. And then this is the next page. I showed this um in the unboxing. So you can see why it's important to get those um small, those tail ends together. So I'm going to find out. If I'm supposed to be doing this, then maybe I'll come back maybe midweek or something and start this one but i think today and tomorrow i'm going to stick to um my comma strokes because honey they need work and then i'm gonna have to do the linear brush ones too so i'll work on all of these uh this week but yeah i mean that was fun that was fun um i'm gonna go ahead oh and i didn't tell y'all so you actually are supposed to submit things so like this my why i actually have to fill it out take a picture of it and submit it oops i got paint on it oh well um and then when i do my practice you're supposed to actually submit the assignment and they'll give you some feedback so i thought that was pretty cool that you can actually get the feedback for what you do so um but yeah so i got a long um i got a long way to go y'all long way to go
All right, so y'all saw earlier that I bought this. It's a churro Kit Kat from Walmart, limited edition. That is probably one of my favorite things to do in the grocery store or Walmart, and that's to look for new flavors of Kit Kat because they're just delicious, most of them. I didn't like one. I think like the strawberry one or whatever, but let's try this one. I love churros, oh my gosh. And I hate a bad churro. When I'm telling you, when it's a bad churro, mm, hurts my soul. All right, let's see. Going in. Look at this. Here we go. It's good. Yeah. You got to chew it a little bit. Mm, excuse me. And you, you start to taste the churro. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Go find you a churro Kit Kat. Right, so I think now we're kind of back in like real time um, because now it's really after everything that you just saw. <laughs> it's still Saturday night and yeah, I want you to lean in close. That's why I put the camera a little bit closer because I want y'all to really listen to me. But um, I want to talk about the elephant in the room. Not that one. <laughs> Yeah, I crack myself up. You know it's healthy. It's healthy to crack yourself up. Anyway, so I'm talking about the fact that I am starting or I guess have started a um, a creative vlog, but like I'm not what people would call an artist. Like I don't say, hey, I'm Brittany, I'm an artist, but um, like, I do art, you know, not saying I could never be, you know, be an artist, but I'm just, that's not how I identify right now with, um, sorry, hit my mic um it's not how I really identify when it comes to like what I do I just I'm a creative person and I think right now when it comes to creativity and art on YouTube you're used to seeing you know studio vlogs art vlogs um by like artists like that's what they do um tutorials you know it's it's very professional type things and um it's it's not often and actually I've never seen not saying it's not there if you do know let me know um but I've never seen videos of people who are like me where they're just doing their thing like they're just they're creative people and they just want to share their journey as they're learning um and and, and like growing and they just take pleasure in creating and Hope that others who take that same pleasure want to share with them. So this brings me to like my main point. And it's like for me, I often feel like I'm an expert tutorialist, professional copier, master mimicker, whatever you want to call it. Like YouTube can be intimidating because a lot of people like when you're watching the video, they're just good. Like whatever they do, whether it's something coming out of their head or something that they're looking at a reference and they just draw something that looks amazing from it um they're good and a lot of times it's just because they're confident um and you know i'm i'm not there i'm not as confident in like my own ability to take something like from my head and put it on paper so like because of that i tend to only not only, but majority of the time, I tend to do a lot of tutorials and reference drawings um, because to me, I'm very confident in sharing those. Like if you look at my Instagram, you'll see a lot of, hey, I did this from this tutorial or from this course because it's like, it's someone else's idea, um, but it's like deep down inside, I'm confident sharing it, but I don't feel that feeling isn't as good 
knowing that it wasn't my idea like it's someone else's idea getting a comp getting the compliment and i've just I've, I've mimicked it well if that makes any sense so like some examples would be um so like these holiday cookies that i made from um lisa bardo's bardo brush she, she's the creator of bardo brush she has an art makers club it is a subscription um membership um but that was fun we did that around the holidays this peppermint candy which i must say i'm very proud of this one i cannot remember actually i just it, I, it's out of my head I don't remember but I'll put it on the screen um, whose tutorial I did for that I do know that it was a YouTube tutorial and then in the Kawaii um, drawing club which is something new another membership that I joined uh, this this <laughs> a red panda that we drew from reference and then I actually added I keep hitting this mic I actually added the words myself because I'm actually trying to learn um, hand lettering as well so that was fun and then you have these uh paper cut sharks that i did from flow if you do procreate you probably know flow on youtube so i did that uh tutorial with from her and then one of my faves this uh, initial floral piece from every tuesday uh, it's one of her procreate beginners courses on her site and she did her she did e but you could do your initial so obviously i chose b so that was fun it was really good and then lastly, which I'm actually very proud of, that's probably one of the few that I'm very proud of, is um, this hot stuff one that I did. So there was an ad and I was like, I wanna draw that. So um, I think like this is the photo, I think that's the ad. Uh, I'm doing that cause I gotta put it in later. So I don't really know. So I gotta make sure I put it on the right side. <laughs> but yeah, so like all those look great to me, you know, like I did a really good job, but it's like, it's not my own, so yeah, I can share it, but I can never monetize it. Like, it's not my idea, you know, this wouldn't be right. So like, you wanna make sure you get credit where credit is due that look, this person is the one that came up with this and I just kind of executed their idea. And like, I, I think I do a lot of tutorials because I don't really know my own style right now. That's something I'm discovering. Like there are people that they find like, oh, you know, I love this brush or this type of style, I work with these type of colors, I don't know. I just at this point I'm just doing like I don't really know and um, I think one thing that I realized is I will never figure out my own style if I don't start just trying my own things not following tutorials it's okay to do those because you learn things you learn techniques and skills and how to use certain brushes and features but I'm never going to figure out my style if I don't just sit down and just create like see what my mind comes up with and do that often enough now don't get me wrong it's not that i never do my own work it's just a matter of um i don't do them as often as i should and a lot of times they don't see the light of day and if they do it's because i send them to a very select few of friends and show it to them which are always confidence boosters because they're always like oh it's so great but you part of you feels like your friends are telling you that because they're your friends but um i know that's not the case I, they probably wouldn't say anything if they didn't like it but um i think also even if i think it's cute i don't want to share it because i don't think somebody else is going to think it's cute uh, which is silly i know but let's be real a lot of us are like that um but like funny story if you remember the last episode episode i'm so used to like recording games and episodes but last vlog I guess that you say that um I showed y'all that cat and funny thing is I didn't think that cat was anything special I honestly wasn't even gonna put it on red bubble but I was like you know what whatever what am I gonna lose that thing got favorited a few times and I was like oh and I've heard somebody say that once like in like drawing they were like how when they have shops and they say that a lot of design they make that they don't really like become their best sellers and the stuff they love don't sell as well so i guess i'm not surprised but it it, it still shocked me that i was like people are actually like favoriting this thing um so yeah so it's just, it's just weird but it kind of goes to show you that like you're not going to please everybody like your style is not going to be everybody's style so even if i draw something and you know I have to understand that everybody won't like it, but somebody might. So why not just put it out there and see who maybe resonates with it, you know? 
So I'm going to step out of my comfort zone, y'all, and I'm going to show y'all a few things that most people have not seen. Um, actually, some of these, no one has seen it, but a few others, uh, very few people have seen it. So first we have this attempt at an apricot cookie and I, I found the reference photo and I hated it when I first did it. This was back in 2022. I think I did this one, but now that I look at it, I don't hate it as much. I don't know if that makes sense. Like I kind of like it. Yeah. It looks a little bit different, but like I did it. <laughs> then there are these lemons. I don't know what I was doing. I, I think at the time I was learning a new brush and I was trying to um, like do art without line work, like just literally making the shapes and, and everything without like sketching and putting the outline on it first. So I think that's where I was going with this one. I mean, it's cute. Then there were these Christmas lights, um, nothing special, but I think at the time I had learned how to make things look like they're glowing. So I think I kind of took that and wanted to do something on my own. So, um, so that was pretty cool. You guys already saw this uh, in the, the last video. If you didn't, go check it out. Um, but this is the macaroni and cheese drawing that I had put on the Canva t-shirt. So um, it is one of my favorites. I do still love that one. Then um, I actually made these cats. I took reference photos of like real cats sitting and then just kind of cartoonized it a little bit. Um, and I used colors for my two digital color palettes that I showed in the last video and kind of made them. I think I named them after the color palette. So one's probably like blueberry and the other one's cherry or something like that. Um, but I mean, I think they're kind of cute. Like they're not realistic, but they got a little cuteness to them. And then lastly, I did this, this cute hedgehog. Um, I actually made this because at the time I was trying to design a like baby nursery fabric um, collection and I needed a pattern. So I kind of wanted to use the hedgehog as like the main piece. I actually never finished it, um, but I need to go back to that because this hedgehog I actually did in Adobe Illustrator. Um, so if I can find that picture, I'll see, but I redid it. And it'll be illustrator so that it could be vectorized. Um, so yeah, I'm and to add that to my list of stuff to go back to. So yeah, I mean, that's some of the stuff that came out of here. Um, or, you know, based on a reference and changed up a little bit, like it wasn't an exact copy. But, you know, some of them I like, some of them I love, some of them, eh. But I need to do that more because otherwise I'm, I'm never really going to get better at freestyling if if I don't so my promise to myself and to you all is to like I want to do more of that and share it you know and you guys can let me know if you don't like it you can tell me you can't hurt my feelings um I don't I'm not I don't get my feelings hurt um so it, it won't hurt my feelings trust me uh but if you do love it you know let me know um, I just am curious to hear your thoughts for the ones you just saw or for once in the future, but my promise is going to be to share it, just practice putting myself out there while I'm going through this process. So yeah, we'll see. So yeah, I think that's it. Um, I just felt like it was important to talk about this sooner or later because I, I wanted, I wanted y'all to be able to understand kind of where I'm coming from and like the heart behind why I'm doing this vlog. Um, it's more of a way to it's more of a way for me to hold myself accountable, but kind of like bring y'all along for the ride and, you know, maybe help somebody else who's in the same position as me where they're just having fun and want to figure it out and just need to know that somebody else out there is going through it too. So like I said several times, I don't know where this may take me, but I'm, I'm just here for, just here for the fun of it. All right, so this is actually unplanned, but um, I had some packages come today and I went ahead and um, just kind of ripped things open. So I can show you what I got. So um, I got these labels. So with my church, we're doing a serve day project in a couple of weeks and we're doing like these affirmation jars. So I bought these little papers 
because we're gonna we can write on them. I'm sorry, it's kind of shiny. Let's put it down here. We're gonna write on them and then fold them up and put them in the jar. So I thought this was a cute way to just kind of vary a little bit, some nice colors to be able to do that. And then um I bought these black sketchbooks. So actually I wanna say tomorrow. Uh hold on. Okay, I had to get some scissors or something. Um, I think tomorrow I want to work on my homework for this course or whatever. But I don't know. I feel like I need to do like do some more practice. So maybe I'll just do that instead. And then next week's vlog, um, I can show. Like I can do like the actual project, so. So it came with two and I'll make sure I link these below. So, and I'm sorry, you can see kind of like the light. Um, yeah, let's do it like this. So you can still see it. Zena Color Expert Series Black Sketchbook. It's 30 sheets, nine by 12, it's a hundred pound. And see? I don't know if it's better or the same quality as the ones that are in my practice book. Let me see. So this is the practice book. I don't know. It might be, but we'll find out because um, I kind of wanted some black paper and something smoother than the watercolor paper. So that's the first thing I got. And then in here is just this and it's black drawing paper and this one's only 92 pounds so i kind of want to see what that is and again i apologize for the light um the, sh the shiny light but let's see so yeah so here's this one uh from bachmore that's what that says and that's this paper I honestly don't feel much of a difference between, hmm, actually y'all, hold on. This 100 pound seems thinner than this 92 pound, like when I'm feeling it, so I don't know. But we are going to try both and see how we like it when I do my, my practice. so y'all i am done with my practice for today and probably for this week so first you saw me going through these so i i kind of went straight for the jugular like i think i was supposed to do like just like these and then add on the next one and then add on like i'm not sure if that's what i was supposed to be doing but i kind of just went straight through um to the end but 
I kind of like doing it that way, but I see, oh, and then as you saw, I used this lovely uh, shot glass and my uh, Arteza white quartz. Um, these are watercolor pencils actually. So basically once they get wet, um, like they act like watercolor. So I'll, I'll make sure I link these below as well. But I kind of used that to draw the circles so that I could kind of use them as a guide. Um, like she said, because I did watch the lesson for this online. So I mentioned two vlogs ago that um, she did give us lessons that showed how to actually do this. So what I was doing was really just replicating it. So, um, so yeah, I mean, these aren't bad. I think it took me until this fourth one to realize that I shouldn't be having a straight line. Like if you look here, like it's not straight, like it's curving under, wait, can you see? Yeah, it's curving under and then coming up. But when I first started, oops, oh. when I first started, I kept going like down and then oops, straight, straight. And then so here I started curving and they started looking a little better in my opinion. So here, um, I think I'd leave a little bit too much space in between them compared to her example. Like if you, yeah, if you look here, um, there's not much space there. So I think it's because I'm nervous that I'm going to, um, get like overlap it but i do need to come down on the spacing in between but i don't know if i had to pick a favorite it's probably between these two like if you want to put um this last one here next to those two like i i don't know or maybe that one let me know what you guys think so look, looking at this here Ooh, hold on. Yeah, there we go. Looking at this, do you guys think that one looks better? T two or three? So one, two, or three. Let me know in the comments which one you think is better. Um, but yeah, so definitely need to practice this a little bit more. And then, um, y'all, I botched these hearts, okay? Let me tell y'all in this world today. Um... I might need to use some tracing paper to get her exact shape because I think how I was trying to do it when I when I drew them out here wasn't working and then freehand it wasn't working either. Um, so yeah, I might use some tracing paper to get similar ones and see if I could work on that a little bit. But for the dots in the video, she explained that like when you dot, um, the dots get smaller so what she told you to do was you started off with this one and then you dotted each one of these so that it got smaller and smaller and then you dipped your paint again dip it back on the largest one so that that stays the largest and then go inward and then repeat on the other side so that's kind of what um this right here is kind of explaining it's saying start here go that way and then come back and then she says dots get smaller as the paint runs out. So that was that practice. Um, I skipped, I forgot about this. So I wound up doing it down here at the bottom, um, which is fine. I mean, that was the, actually the easy part. This y'all, not very easy. Um, I was trying to do this. So you were supposed to do two strokes, I think, and then use the linear brush to create the little outsides. I think my circles are too big. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Like, obviously this is my painting. I could do what I want, but if I'm trying to replicate, um, they were a little big. And like, you see how the way she does it, it's just like, it flows like a, the, like a comma. We are doing comma strokes. I think I struggle with sometimes, instead of like, this one is cool. Like that right there is cool, but like, this I feel like kind of it's like straight and then it's almost like it has a corner and then like here same thing it's almost like it has a corner here um so and then I don't know what this was I don't know what was happening in this world right here I don't know 
I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so I definitely need to work on those. So instead of moving on, so I think what you're supposed to do is do the stems and then put together the stems and the buds to make this thing right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Can y'all, could y'all see that? Yeah. Stems and then buds and then put together the stems and the buds um, to make this little design right here. I think I'm going to, oops, sorry. I think I'm going to hold off on that until next week and just continue doing more flowers. I'm going to submit the flowers. So if you, if you aren't, if you didn't remember, you actually can submit your work. So I'm going to see if I can submit this or if I have to submit all three. If I can submit this, I'm going to submit this for some feedback. But if um, if I can't, then I'll just wait. And I think next week I'm going to uh, practice more of the flowers here and then more hearts, more buds. I don't need to practice this. This is pretty easy. And then I can show me starting the stems maybe and then doing some practice of putting the buds um, and the stems together. So yeah, that was a lot. I know. But that was fun. That was fun. That was good. I feel I like this paper. So real quick, let me show you. So this one was the black sketch book ske uh, sketch book. That's a hundred pounds. And this is the back of the paper. So I mean, I can feel it a little bit, but I mean it's fine. Like I I definitely like this paper, the 100. And then Let's check out this one. This is the 92. So let's see. This is the 92 and same. Actually, to be honest, remember when I unboxed it, I said I felt like this one felt thicker. But like there's nothing here. But these are smaller. These are smaller designs. So it could be that they're not, there's not as much paint. Um, But yeah, so I think, oh, and then this one was, hold on. This one was the black, here we go, the black drawing paper. And it was 92 pounds by Bachmore. Um, you see that? Bachmore. So yeah, so I think both are viable options if you want to get some of this paper for yourself. Um, so yeah, so this is, this is it y'all. This is my practice. Can I get all of them in the camera? Probably not. I can get some of it. Oh, well. Anyway. All right. So, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and do some more practice on my own and probably just end this vlog here because it's it's getting late and I got I have nothing else to give. <laughs> but, yeah. So, just enjoy um, the rest of this and I will see you all next week. <laughs>